Hey there drone fans, Rick here again with another review, and today I'd like to tell you about a pretty critical and really exciting firmware update from DJI for their DJI RC that now allows you to fly the Air 2S drone with this controller. Now, if you're not familiar with the DJI RC, it was originally released with the Mini 3 Pro as an option. You could have bought the Mini 3 Pro drone on its own as long as you had another DJI controller that was compatible, or you could have bought it with the standard controller and used your phone or your tablet as your display if you like to fly that way, or you could have bought it with this brand new smart controller, the DJI RC. And this is the package that I really like and I recommend because it just simplifies the whole process of flying because you eliminate all the hassles about is the cable good, connecting my phone to the controller, do I have the right version of the application, is my phone charged? So this just simplified it because you could spin up the controller, spin up the drone, put it up in the air, and just start flying. It was just a great combination. Well, a couple of months later, DJI released a firmware update for the controller and the Mavic 3 that now allowed you to use the same controller to fly your Mini 3 Pro and the Mavic 3. So what a value there. I can actually fly my big drone with a smart controller that came with my Mini 3 Pro. Well, the minute that happened, everybody wanted to know, when are they going to come out with an update to fly the Air 2S? Well, a couple of months went by, and lo and behold, last Wednesday, DJI released a set of microcode upgrades for a couple of these drones and the controller and the application that now allows you to use this with all three drones. So you can fly the Mini 3 Pro, the Mavic Mavic 3 and the Air 2S from a single controller. Now before I get too deep into how you do the upgrades and what versions you need to upgrade to, I mentioned the word critical before because this firmware update, you're crossing a line. You're actually pivoting into a new world once you do this. And what I mean by that, and I'm not trying to get too political here, but the minute you do this upgrade, there's no backing down. You can't rev back to an older version of microcode. And the reason that's important is because once you cross this threshold, the remote ID functionality on the drones is live and it's live in the controller, and it's live on the drones. And if that's something that really concerns you, you want to be careful when you do the update that you know you're getting into that situation. Now, for me, it's not that big a deal because I'm not doing anything illegal with my drones. I'm flying them safe. I'm flying them sane. I'm staying under 400 feet. I'm staying away from NFZs. I'm not flying over people. So I don't really care if somebody knows where the drone is or knows that it's my drone or where I'm standing. So there's a lot of politics around that. I don't want to get into it, but I will be doing a clip next week talking about remote ID specifically because now that this firmware is out, we have to deal with it. It's live. Now, the upside of that is that if you own these drones, they're immediately remote ID compliant. So you don't have to worry about next year when it becomes law of the land, you've got drones that aren't compliant. You have DJI drones that came out in some cases a year or more ago, and they're compliant with remote ID. So great, great job, DJI, for turning that on with the drones. But anyway, you need to know that before you do the update, because like I said, the minute you do it, there's no going back. The app is updated, the controller's updated, some of the drone firmware is updated as well. And, and again, you're either, you're either before remote ID or you're after remote ID, but this is the microcode that'll do it. So let me tell you what the versions are you need for the different devices. And there's a lot of different firmware that needs to be updated. So let's start with the smart controller. The version you need there in the DJI RC is V01.02.0000. And that was released on 1026. You also have to update the DJI Fly application, which happens as part of the update to the controller, and that'll update to version 1.7.8. And again, that was released on the 1026 date as well. The Mini 3 Pro actually gets an update, and I think that has to do with enabling the remote ID, but that was released on Wednesday as well, and that'll update to V01.00.0400. There was no update for the Mavic 3, which was interesting, so I have to see did they update that to remote ID compatibility in an earlier version, or is that something that's coming? But anyway, the current version on that that works with this new controller firmware is V01.00.0800. And then finally, the Air 2S gets a firmware update as well to make it compatible with the smart controller. And that version is V02.04.23.20. Now, my recommendation is if you're going to do these updates, and I recommend you do, I mean, we're going to have to deal with remote ID in a year, so get it out of the way now. The other thing you got to be careful of is that if you don't do the update, there are other features that are coming really soon that you won't be able to take advantage of. So make sure you do the update and just get it over with. It's not that big a deal. All right, so to do the update, you'll update the controller first, and that'll automatically update the DJI Fly application. 
The challenge is you can't connect to your Air 2S yet. So you still need the original controller you were using before to do the firmware update there. So bring the old controller out, hook it up, connect up to the Air 2S, look for a firmware update. You can go into the About section, go down, check for updates on firmware. You'll see that there's new firmware out for it add the firmware to it. Once you've done that, you'll need to rebind it to the controller one time. So the controller won't know where the Air 2S is. It'll bind to it, and then you'll be ready to rock and roll. Now, the other drone should be already bound to the controller, but you might stumble over a couple of things during the firmware update process that I'll talk about at the end of this clip. But for now, I've done the updates on all of these, including the controller and the DJI Fly app. And just to prove to you <laughs> that this isn't some kind of you know shenanigans going on here, I'm gonna go out in the field right now and show you that with a single controller, I can fly the Mini 3 Pro, I can fly the Mavic 3, and I can fly the brand new Air 2S compatibility function inside the controller. So let's go out to the field next, and then I'll come back with a couple of final thoughts because there are a few hiccups that you're gonna run into during the firmware update that I'll go through. They're really simple, but they're things that anytime you update the firmware, you wanna make sure you check these things. So stay tuned, we'll head out in the field. I'm out for a little bit of field testing of the brand new firmware that was just released for the DJI RC controller. Now I've updated the firmware on the controller, I've also updated the DJI Fly app, and I've updated the firmware on all three drones you can now use this controller with. The Mini 3 Pro, which I have over there on the mat, the Mavic 3, which I have in the bag, and the Air 2S, which is the latest addition to the controller. And I wanted to show you that you can actually fly all three drones with this one single controller, which I think is amazing. So I'll start off with the Mini 3 Pro. We know that works because it was sold with the controller, but I'd like to show you that nothing's changed. So let me spin up the propellers, lift off, just take it down field a little bit. So you can see that it's flying just fine, no issues whatsoever. I can elevate, I can descend, I can spin. Camera's working great, I got a beautiful view of what's going on out there in the field, and everything is just great. So let me put that one down. Now what I'll do next is move on to the Mavic 3. That was the first one that was added after the controller was released. And then I'll move on to the Air 2S. Let me try and land this on the mat. I'm getting a little bit of wind here, so this would be a little interesting. All right, over to the right, left, left, left. Come on, buddy. Get back, there you go. Boy, that wind is really kicking up. That's the only challenge with the Mini 3 Pro is that the wind really, uh, really affects it. So anyway, the Mini 3 Pro is flying fine. Now I'll take the uh, Mavic 3, put that up, and then we'll get on to the Air 2S. Okay, now I have the Mavic 3 set up on the mat, and all I have to do to fly that drone is to go back to the main menu, and then slide to the left till I see the Mavic 3 picture, tap that, and it immediately connects to the drone, and I see the main screen that says Go Fly. So I'll tap the Go Fly button. What that'll do is bring up an image from the camera on here, so I've got a first-person view of exactly what's going on with the drone. Now, one thing I want to point out is that you don't have to rebind it. Like, older versions of the smart controllers required you to rebind stuff every time you flew a different drone. With this one, the controller remembers the profile, which is a big improvement because the Mavic 3 flies a lot differently than the Mini 3 Pro and certainly different than the Air 2S. So the fact that it remembers the parameters I think is a really big advancement. So let's get this guy up in the air. So I'll spin up the propellers. That worked okay. Let me lift off. There you go. And then downfield. Now this shouldn't be that big a, a surprise because We've honestly been flying with the DJI RC and the Mavic 3 for a couple of weeks now, but I wanted to show you that nothing broke with this new firmware. So it's flying, it's just fine, I can spin around, complete control, and I'll just take it back and land it. One other thing I want to point out too is that, look how stable that is in the air. Now a second ago I was flying the Mini 3 Pro, and that was getting buffeted all over the place from the wind. With this one, because of the extra mass and the bulk up there in the air, it doesn't really care about the wind. It's like saying, ah, a little bit of wind, what do I care? So that's a pretty good example of what a larger drone will do for you, especially if you're out flying in windy conditions. So let me land this guy. All right, so we've seen the Mini 3 Pro fly, and now we've seen the Mavic 3 fly. Now next I'm gonna fly the Air 2S, and that should be the one that everybody's excited about because I can't tell you how many emails we've gotten from viewers saying, when are they gonna add the Air 2S to the DJRRC? Well, they did it, and I'm gonna show you how it flies today. So stay tuned for that next. Okay, here's the one that everybody's been waiting for. I have the Air 2S set up right there on the mat. I've already downloaded the firmware, and all I have to do to fly it is actually go back to the main menu, slide to the left twice until I see the Air 2S icon, and tap that. It takes me to the DJI Fly app. I hit the Go Fly button, and any second now, it's gonna bring up the display. There it is. So I've got a view from the camera right there from the Air 2S. Now, what's interesting about this, again, is that it remembers the profiles. I switched between the Mini 3 Pro the Mavic 3, and now the Air 2S without rebinding anything, which is really a benefit. So let's just fly this a little bit. This is gonna be fun. 
So I'll spin up the propellers. Are you sure you check the propellers? Yes, I checked the propellers. All right, spin them up. All right, <laughs> here we go. Well, man, oh man, what a beautiful view too. Like this RC, this DJI RC is just like the best combination of price and performance and it's small and beautiful and the screen looks great. And now that I can fly three drones with it, man, oh man, am I gonna have fun. Cause I fly a lot of different drones and I fly the Mavic 3 a lot. I fly the Mini 3 Pro, the Air 2S. I'm sure a lot of you guys have a couple of drones. And, or if you're just buying a drone and you're looking for a smart controller, here we go. All right, so let me land this guy now that we know it flies. And I'm gonna spend more time flying this, but <laughs> again, I gotta say it. Uh, I'm gonna come back with a few comments at the end. But when you think about the value in a product like this, and I'm not trying to sell you the product, but when you buy electronics, you buy electronics and that's it. You use it until it gets old and you replace it with the next generation. What DJI has done here is released a remote controller that's a smart controller with the Mini 3 Pro that they've updated through firmware to allow you to fly the Mavic 3 and now the Air 2S. What a value that is just by pushing firmware out over the air. So I think that's wonderful. Now there are a couple of cautions on this that I'll talk about. So stay tuned, I'm going back to the shop and I wanna go over that because there are some considerations when you move to this new firmware around remote ID that you may wanna consider. Not a problem for me, I'm completely remote ID compliant at this point. All of my drones are broadcasting like crazy so anybody who wants to find the drone or find me can find it because I'm not breaking the law. I'm flying in an area with nobody around, I'm watching for airplanes, I'm not near an airport. So as long as you play by the rules, the remote ID is not a big deal, but I'm getting political there. I don't wanna to talk too much about that, but I'll come back at the end with a couple of cautions and a couple of things that I found during the firmware updates that you want to be aware of because they're not perfectly clean. There's a couple of hiccups and it's nothing to worry about, but I thought I'd point them out. So stay tuned. We'll head back to the shop. Okay, so you can see all three drones fly without any issues whatsoever with a single controller. And I think that's absolutely amazing. And it really increases the value of the smart controller because I fly this drone a lot. I fly this drone for commercial purposes. I had this one with me up in Vermont a couple of weeks ago, flying it like crazy. I sure wish they'd have come out with the firmware before I was up there in Vermont because I would have loved to use this controller with it. But now I can fly all of my current drones with a single controller, which I think is absolutely amazing. All right, so as far as the firmware updates go, a couple of things to keep in mind. Number one, if you run into hiccups along the way, it's gonna be around connectivity to the drone. So make sure you understand exactly how to rebind a drone for the first time. And it couldn't be simpler, you'll basically put the controller in binding mode on the drone you'll hold that you'll turn it on and you'll hold down on the power button until it goes into binding mode and you'll know it because the lights will start strobing once that happens the controller's searching for the drone it's going to find it you'll hear three or four beeps and then you're bound now the cool thing as i mentioned in the testing in the field is that with the older smart controllers when they first started putting multiple drones on a smart controller every time you switch to a new drone you had to go through the binding process again which was a bit of a pain in the neck because you know it takes a couple extra seconds you're out in the field you want to get up and fly with this one you don't so i've got to do a lot more investigation around this but my suspicion is they're keeping profiles on the controller of the different drones and when you're switching between them they're applying that profile to the controller because the drones fly differently and they have different feature sets and they can do different things some have zoom some don't some have features that the others don't so those profiles are really a personality adjustment for the drone you're flying with the smart controller. So I love the fact that all I have to do is swipe through that first screen to pick the drone I wanna fly, and it immediately brings up an image from the camera. I think you're saving a lot of time. Another thing I wanna caution you about is that sometimes, in this case it actually happened, these firmware updates you're doing to the drones also update the controller inside the batteries. And a lot of people miss that because you'll do the firmware update to the drone, you're all excited about getting outside and flying these new features, and you'll run out and start flying, and then you'll reach into your bag, you'll pull out your second battery, you'll put it in the drone, uh-oh, it's not firmware updated. And you're gonna wonder, wait a minute, I just did a firmware update, what's the message that the firmware is not compatible? It's because of the battery, because the battery has a controller inside of it, and there's firmware on that controller, and that has to match the firmware inside the drone and the firmware in the application you're actually running because the drone talks to the battery all the time and if the firmware is at a different level it's not going to want to talk to the battery so my recommendation is anytime you do firmware updates rotate all your batteries through the drone before you leave home because if you've got to download new firmware you don't want to do that out in the field the last thing i'll tell you is anytime you update firmware in your drone always check your settings because some of the firmware will reset some of the critical settings inside your drone. They may flip you from imperial to metric. They may reduce the uh, flight distance or the flight height. They'll certainly change some of the the effects you have on how you spin your drone, how fast it spins, how slow it spins. So just check every return to home height is another one that gets changed a lot. So go into the settings, 
and check all those settings. What I like to do is screenshots of all the settings I've got before I do the firmware update, and then I'll check those and compare those after the firmware update, just to make sure that everything's the way I like it to be. And that's pretty much it. So again, I've said it before, I just love a company like this that sells you a product day one, and then makes it smarter over time, makes it more functional over time. And that's exactly what they've done with the DJI RC. I can now fly my Mini 3 Pro, I can fly the Mavic 3, I can fly the Air 2S. Here's the challenge I have for DJI. Wouldn't it be cool, since it runs on OcuSync, if they updated this to fly the new DJI FPV drone? Wouldn't that be cool, the Avada? Why not? Let's update this to fly the Avada. Maybe that's the next big challenge. So don't start emailing me, because I'll get a hold of DJI and see if they have any plans to do that. But that would be ultimately cool, because that's the last drone I fly currently that I'd love to have as part of this set. But anyway, that's pretty much all I had for today. So hopefully you found this review helpful. I love talking about this kind of technology. You can tell I'm like a nine-year-old here. I'm so giddy that I'm outside flying with this thing. And I'll be back with more. So thanks an awful lot for watching. And until next time, <laughs> happy flying. Thank you.